Wherever it is that you call home, it's your castle. It's where, at the end of a long day, you can safely hang your hat. But safety, for many of us, includes being in a place that's clean. And being clean, it starts with your hands. How nice would it be if this was all that it took to completely sterilize the surface of your hands? No soap, no water, no chemicals, just a quick scan of your hands using high voltage corona to eradicate all life on the surface of your skin. Hey everybody, my name is Jay and you're watching Plasma Channel. If you're new here, welcome. This is a channel dedicated to the amazing, sometimes magical uses of plasma physics. This video is an exploration into the possibility of killing bacteria and viruses using high voltage corona. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, it's known that microbes and bacteria love to hang out on our skin. They love it, but luckily there's several methods you can use to level the playing field and kill any freeloaders that are hitching a ride on your hands. We've all been taught how to clean our hands using soap and water. And if you're feeling savvy, rubbing alcohol does the same job. Heck, if you're well-researched, you may even know about UV sterilization. But there's also an entirely different method. It sterilizes everything from objects to your hands and even an entire room. And get this, it's been studied for more than 100 years. I'm talking about ozone sterilization. You see, ozone's not only responsible for protecting life on Earth, but it's also capable of destroying life. Sounds a bit confused. And making ozone's pretty easy. You know that strange smell after a thunderstorm? Well, that's ozone. Because ozone is produced from high voltage discharges. In particular, coronal discharges like you see here produce a ton of ozone. So for the purposes of this video, I've modified the Curlian imager that I built in a past video of mine. It was modified to allow an onboard power source and be portable. It's what you saw in action a minute ago. It runs off 20,000 volts and it creates a tremendous amount of corona on pretty much anything conductive. So this thing basically acts as an ozone generator. That's why I'll be using it to directly test the effects of ozone on the growth of bacteria and microbes. And in order to determine this effect, here's the plan. Bacterial growth plates exist to test situations like this. I have two triplicates, three plates for bacteria on hands prior to ozone and three plates for bacteria after ozone treatment. To start, I swabbed my fingers prior to any treatment. Hadn't washed them all day, so perfect starting point. Then each of three plates was inoculated with different swabs. Next, I blasted my fingers with about 15 seconds of corona in such a way that they basically bathed in ozone and repeated the exact same process for inoculating the other three plates. I then placed them in a bleached microwave inverted and allowed them to grow for two days. Now before I show you the results of the growth experiment, a bit of science. How does a simple gas sterilize a dirty surface? Well, the cell walls of bacteria and the walls of viruses are vulnerable to oxidation. When the walls of a bacteria are heavily oxidized, the cell is at risk of rupturing. When you oxidize the outside of a viral cell, the amino acids that it usually uses to enter your cells become oxidized and inactive. Oxidation essentially reduces the ability of a virus to replicate. In some cases, it destroys the virus altogether. You can actually see this taking place when you put hydrogen peroxide on an open wound. You know all those bubbles? That's why it's such a good antiseptic. You know it's also oxidative? You guessed it, ozone. In fact, it's so oxidative that in large enough concentrations, it can cause lung damage. So you always need to use it with fresh air. The studies that have been done on the oxidative effects of ozone are numerous. I'll link several of them in the description below. A study was even published in March of 2020 that indicated infusing ozone into the bloodstream can actually fight a current viral infection. Pretty crazy stuff. Now that you've had a crash course on how oxidation can kill viruses and bacteria, let's go check out the results of the growth test. Removing them from my professional incubator. Okay, I've got both triplicates in hand and the results, <laughs> they're insane. Before you see them, keep in mind that both triplicates were stored inverted at 75 degrees for 48 hours in the same location. So both of these experienced the same growing situations. Here's the growth of bacteria from my fingers prior to any treatment. Clearly pretty dirty, hundreds of growth colonies. But here's the growth of bacteria from my fingers after 15 seconds of corona and subsequent ozone. One single colony, nearly sterilized. Side by side, here's the two triplicates. There's a very stark difference between the control group and the treatment group. 
And while these plates don't represent the growth of all kinds of bacteria, these results are a pretty clear indication of the effect coronal radiation and ozone treatment have on bacterial life. Unfortunately, I'm not able to test the effect on viruses here in my studio, but these results match up with decades worth of studies, and those studies show that coronal radiation and ozone treatment eradicates both bacteria and viruses. As mentioned earlier, other objects such as keys can be sterilized by this method as well. Just a few seconds of corona, and it's good to go. Devices like this can also be used to sterilize really large areas too. If this is left on for a prolonged period of time and enough ozone builds up in the air, it can sterilize an entire room. Seriously. And luckily the half-life of ozone is really short, about 40 minutes at room temperature. So you can come back in two to three hours later and be perfectly fine. Right, but why not just use UV light to sterilize your hands or a room? That's a really great question because UV is a proven method for killing bacteria and viruses. It's been known for a while and even hospitals use it to sterilize entire hospital rooms. However, if you want to use it to sterilize your room, and even in a hospital room, it has a flaw. It's mostly line of sight. So even though UV itself does create a little bit of ozone, which in itself is sterilizing, being line of sight means that any nooks and crannies, any cracks, any dark spots, anything, maybe perhaps the underside of a bed that's not hit by the UV is not going to be fully sterilized. Ozone, on the other hand, is a gas. So it sterilizes anything it engulfs. Additionally, while ozone can take seconds, UV can take minutes. Okay, I know you're thinking, why not just use hand sanitizer? It's obviously the fastest, most efficient way to sterilize your hands, right? However, for a lot of people, myself included, using rubbing alcohol or soap and water can irritate our skin. I, in particular, I have a really mild form of eczema and it only affects my hands. So if I wash my hands too much or use, a, or use rubbing alcohol, my hands start to burn and itch. Not fun. A few seconds of ozone, on the other hand, totally painless. So ultimately, it's corona fighting corona. That's kind of a match made in heaven, if you ask me. Two quick notes about safety, though. First of all, sterilizing your hands this way doesn't produce that much ozone. It's not going to hurt your lungs. However, as I mentioned earlier, if you're trying to sterilize an entire room, you need to leave. And second, and most importantly, regardless of what your stance is on the science that I've presented here, Always follow CDC guidelines for proper sanitation. Imagine something like this inside the door of every residence. I hope this video was shareworthy and got the conversation started about instant ozone sterilization. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video because I had a ton of fun shooting it. And even though I knew what results to expect, the actual results, they kind of blew me away. So if you have any questions or comments about the process, feel free to leave a comment down below. I read pretty much all of them. Also, I will leave a link in the video description for the growth plates that I used for this experiment. And I do explicitly want to thank all the people who choose to support my work through Patreon. You help make videos like this possible. Thanks for stopping by and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to Plasma Channel. Check us out on other social media and feel free to check out our various other episodes. With science every two weeks, you stay classy.